Hi, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, or almost afternoon. Finishing strong Friday. Friday. How's your Friday going? How's your week going? That's a better question. Yes. So we wanted to uh, jump on today. Usually we do this on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. Um, we were actually away, so we're jumping on today. And I think we're going to start doing it on Friday as well. So we want to do something a little bit on Monday, on Wednesday, give you some wisdom, and then also finish it out on Friday because we find um, a lot of times with our students and in ourselves, we tend to get a little stressed out or overwhelmed as the week goes by because we have all these amazing goals on Monday and all these tasks and things that we want to get done. And then as the week goes by, you're like, holy crap, I didn't get any of this done. And sometimes people will experience stress and overwhelm. Has anybody ever felt that way? Yes. Or they get to Thursday and Friday and they're like, it's almost the weekend. I can just coast, you know, <laughs> just relax. But the problem with that is if you keep doing that over a period of time, you keep pushing all the stuff that you were doing um, the week before to the following week, the following week, and the following week. And then before you know it, you're not getting anything done. And then you feel really overwhelmed and stressed by the end of the first quarter. Yeah. I know I've been there. So we wanted to talk a little bit about how to get in control of your thinking and how to hone in your focus. I know last uh, Wednesday we talked about beliefs and how your, hey Kristen, it's good to see you, how your beliefs literally filter how you perceive your reality. They also are how you, they are tied to your focus, which we're going to talk today. They also dictate your behavior and they also attract certain things in your world. So if we're constantly thinking about negative things, if we're constantly focused on things that we don't want chances are we're going to produce behavior that gets us exactly that result. And peak performance coaches and trainers, I mean, I know Darren Hardy talks about it, uh, the uh, uh, the guy from StoryBrand, um, Brendan Bouchard, they all talk about what you focus on, it spans, so does Tony Robbins, he talks about this. The more you focus on the things that don't really matter or things that are not producing um, results, you're gonna get more of that right? Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. And our Amazon Prime is here. Yay! We love Amazon Prime. <laughs> Which is exciting because <laughs> we have no groceries. <laughs> hey, Denise. It's good to see you. So let's, let's break down our focus because a lot of people talk about focus. They talk about how you will attract what you focus on, how your focus creates your behavior, therefore your results in your life, but they don't really break down what your focus is. What's your focus made up of? Yeah, even more importantly. Does anybody know? Anybody know? Hello. So your focus, <laughs> we only really do about six things in your mind. Only six. That's only it. six. Just six. What are we so overwhelmed about? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be craziness in there. I don't know about you, but I know that I can drive myself crazy. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and it really boils down to your focus. So write this down. So we have our pictures. Yes, we all make pictures inside of our head. Most people aren't necessarily aware of the pictures. Did you know that your pictures are what kick off what a lot of your motivation? According to NLP, most are, according to NLP, our values are kicked off by an internal picture in our mind, which is part of our motivation strategy. This yep. is very <clears throat> important. So start paying attention to your pictures. So we make pictures. We also hear sounds. Right. Yes. The auditory, you know, the the sound that you may or the song maybe you heard a while ago and it just keeps playing over and over and over again in your mind. We also okay. have feelings. Yeah. What are those? The kinesthetic. Right. Yeah. Tactile. <laughs> but we also have emotional feeling. Right. The feelings inside. Are we feeling are we feeling happy? happy? Are we feeling tired? Uh, Are we feeling excited and totally full of energy? Are we feeling totally depressed? awake, totally alive? Ooh. Are we feeling fear? By the way, stress is derived by fear, right? Same thing for anxiety. If you feel anxiety, there's something there to investigate. And then we have um, we have the picture, sounds, feelings, and then we have the tastes, right? The taste of I don't know, chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then the smells. Mm. <sighs> Reminds me of home. Mm. Or flowers. It's good to be home. We have the taste, the smells. And then what do we got at the end? Anybody know? 
the internal dialogue, you know, your Auditory little self-talk that's talking all the time in your mind. The things that you say to yourself, right? Yeah? What you say to yourself, what you're saying to yourself inside. You're saying, oh, you can do that. Or no, oh, who do you think know, you like, are? You can't do that. Yeah. I've why would you try to, before. why would you try to go be the best you can be? You can't make that kind of money. You don't want to be the best you can be, do you? Oh my gosh. And so, and by the way, your internal dialogue, it's just from your programming and it's no big deal. It's <laughs> actually trying to protect you from getting yourself hurt. It's keeping you safe. Yes. It's, so it the, it's the, it's the guard of the comfort zone. If you would like to put it, you know, quite frankly, it, it is the person that the keeps king's you comfortable. God of the comfort zone. Or if you uh, reprogram it with NLP, you can reprogram it to be your advocate and your coach. So let's bring this back together. So we have picture, sounds, feelings, taste, smells, and self-talk. That is everything that combines, uh, combines up to create your focus. And then your focus, whatever you focus on, it spans. And so that creates your behavior, that creates your results. It spans and it also, into behavior. Exactly. But it also, whatever you're focusing on most of the time is also sending a very, very clear, clear intention to the universe of what you're going to attract in your life. <clears throat> so it's, it's a two part thing. It's what you will attract in your environment. At the same time, it's how you will behave in the day to day to attract or to produce specific results that will then create a result. So what if one is not happy with the results they are getting in their current life? Mm. What if this doesn't have to be you, this could be anyone. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story. Um, so we were doing a, a mastermind last week with some friends of ours, and we were setting some big, big goals for 2020 and beyond of things that we really, really want to accomplish. And for me, sometimes because, mm, you know, I'm discovering these limiting beliefs about myself, I found, no. yeah, really? well, every time you up level, you may find some new limiting beliefs. That's true. If you do expand and you're constantly getting yourself out of the comfort zone into some new unchartered territory, then you might discover some limiting beliefs. Hence why we take massive action and double your goals each time you hit close to those goals. Yep. So we set a goal together and then automatically when we did the visualization process that we teach in the three day training and also in the practitioner training and the hypnosis training that's coming up, um, we do this visualization process that has all the five senses plus your internal dialogue that's all tapped in. And so I kept finding myself when I was making this visualization process of everything that I wanted to create in my life, I kept feeling this feeling of fear coming up. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Do that like that doubt feeling. <laughs> ah, I was like, where is this coming from? And so I ended up finish, finishing the process and dropping it into my timeline. But that was a clue. That was a huge clue because I knew because all that stuff was coming up for me that there was something to investigate. There was a limitation that I had about what I could create that was creating that focus that would create the results. And so immediately I went back with timeline therapy and let it go. Yep. Quick little mind hack. So we find ourselves, I mean, here's a really good example of people and their focus. So what do you think is overwhelm? Mm. Mm. Maybe the chunk is too large. Yeah. The chunk of information. It could be. It's too great. So a lot of times when people get anxiety, you hear this a lot in our, in our um, society, people are plagued with anxiety. First thing you want to do is take a deep breath. <sighs> Maybe a couple more. Calm, cool headed and in control. That's right. Calm, cool headed and in control. Just relax. And then you want to start asking yourself, what is going on in here? What's going on? What am I creating in my mind that is is delegating and talking to my body to tighten everything up? <laughs> because we believe we believe that anxiety is caused by what's going on inside. What are you focusing on? Start paying attention. Whenever you have anxiety, start <clears throat> paying attention to the pictures, sounds, feelings, taste, smells, and self-talk that you're creating. Because your body is only communicating what you're focusing on. Because remember your unconscious mind is the, um, 
is the um, owner and operator of your body and your behavior. And so whenever you feel those emotions of anxiety or overwhelm, it's your unconscious mind like, pay attention. Reminds me of that client that we worked with, the gal that was getting ready for her wedding. <laughs> and she was having panic attacks, really massive panic oh, attacks. Oh, yeah. Like anxiety two times 10. And guess what? When we figured out asking her questions, we asked her, what's her focus? She's focused on everything going wrong. The big day. Like the mother-in-law was having a panic attack. She saw the catering the thing not showing up on the right time. We're like, getting along. She literally was creating, she literally was creating a movie of everything she wanted or didn't want to everything happen. Everything she didn't want to happen. Like the cake not being right, the photographer not taking good photos, like everything was wrong. All the way down to the last step, literally, of how the how the entire process would have happened exactly the way she didn't want it. And so we said, well, look at your focus. What are you creating? So we said, what do you want instead? What do you want instead? Of all that stuff. I know you guys hear this from us quite often, though this is what we do with ourselves. It is the ultimate reframe of what from what you don't want to what you want. Yep. Anytime that you feel that any of those those little things, the pictures, sounds, feelings, taste, smells, self-talk, if any of those are off, out of alignment. Out of alignment, they're going to get you um, a variation of results. It will be up and down in the results that you want. So if you find yourself having one of those off of what you don't want or making a picture, a sound, a feeling, taste, smell, self-talk of what you don't want, you want to ask yourself, what do you want instead? What do you want instead of all that? And then write it down and focus on it like it is the, the biggest, most important thing of your life. If you can train your mind to focus on what you want, you will <clears throat> feel so much better throughout the day. We're kind that of programmed. Is... We're programmed to think this way. So we got to unthink and unprogram the way we've been taught and society has raised us to think, which is to focus on what we want instead of what we don't. Most people know specifically exactly what they don't want, and they have no idea why they don't want it. Exactly. And same thing goes for overwhelm. We had a gal in our training. She's like, I am so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. You know, like she was literally stuck. I mean, a lot of times I believe um, apathy as well as procrastination is tied to overwhelm. Well, in this society that we live in, we're bombarded with so much information. And a lot of times we're an entrepreneur. you got so many things that are going on. And so we say it's it's basically you have like all these spinning plates. You have about 10 to 15 spinning plates and you're trying to juggle it all at the keep same time. And you're trying to keep them all going and working and it can be overwhelming. Well, it will be really overwhelming if you're imagining all these spinning plates flying off and crashing. Does that make sense? It only gets worse. So when you're overwhelmed, I like to say... Delete, delete, reject. Okay. Delete. Eliminate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you find yourself overwhelmed, the best way to get out of overwhelmed is write a list. What specifically am I overwhelmed about? And then write down that list. Write down all those little chunks. We even we have a whiteboard behind us. We just, you know, go to our whiteboard and write down all the things, right? And then with all those things, then get specific on each one of those. And then write down that list. And then after you look at it, stand back and figure out what is the most important. What's the one thing you can focus on such that by doing it, you get clarity? Yeah. And then when you figure that out, take massive action. Oh, oh, and by the way, while you're doing that. What? Focus on what you want. Focus Imagine on what you want. All the things with completing obsession. successfully in your mind. Because then. With purity. If you focus on what you want, you're going to attract certain circumstances that are going to create that situation. Besides, you're going to create the behavior, the behavior to get that result. To get you better results. It's that simple. That's all you got to do to get out of anxiety and overwhelm. It's that simple. Focus. Focus. Yay. Hey, Shaylee. It's good to see you. <laughs> so <clears throat> what is your task today? I don't know. So write down all the things, all the things that you feel stress and anxiety all about. All the things. Get it out. Make a priority list. 
focus on what you want and take action. Oh, and one last thing too, if you're feeling overwhelmed and anxiety, a lot of times when you set big goals for yourself and you're not taking action, you got to take action. A lot of times your unconscious mind will make you feel anxiety to get you moving. Yeah, you got to take action so you get feedback, so you know how to adjust, how to make those micro adjustments, those movements to get better. Exactly. Do something different. So a, a lot of times in coaching, I have people, um, you know, when I'm coaching, call me and let me know, you know, after the training, they had all these great goals they put in their timeline and they're feeling really fired up and amazing for the first couple of weeks. And then their action kind of so and then they call up and they're like, I'm feeling so anxious. Like I did all this work and I let <laughs> it go and I was feeling on top of the world. I don't, I don't get it. What else do I need to let go of? I'm like, nothing. Go take massive action. Now you got to go do. You've got to go do. And if you, if you are doing and you are taking massive action, you find yourself getting things that you still don't quite want or maybe you're not getting the goal 100%, then really break down what you're focused on, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're saying to yourself. Yeah? Because all those things are like little your affirmations to your unconscious mind of what you want to create. Yep. So it's not just the self-talk we would need to pay attention to because a lot of other schools and um, personal growth and development, they talk about your internal dialogue as being suggestions, you know, um, hypnosis, really. It's your self-talk that is hypnotizing yourself every single day of the story that you're going to create. And it's more than that. You got to start paying attention to the pictures that you're making in your mind, the movie that you're seeing in your mind. Is your internal dialogue hypnotizing you to do positive things? Yeah. And saying positive affirmations or is it saying uh, <laughs> the other? And what are you hearing? Are you, do you have uh, positive sounds? And you can even amplify the sounds up to create even more of a, a motivation. You can turn those sounds up if they're positive. And then what are the feelings? Always check internally throughout the day. How am I feeling about what I'm doing right now? Start paying attention to those feelings. And if you're not feeling congruent, if you're not feeling in a positive, healthy, flow, happy, um, confident state, again, like we talked about last week, is um, what is creating this focus? What's behind it? Because a lot of times there are negative emotions like anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, uh, shame that could be creating that feeling in you in the moment. Or they could be limiting beliefs. Thinking that They're limits us thinking that limits what you believe that you can do. So of course, every time you go take action, there's like these little ties behind you pulling you back because it does, you're, you um, congruently don't believe that you can do it. So start paying attention to that. Yep. And the dogs outside agree. They do. So we're going to wrap it up today. Task tonight is to write down all the things and prioritize and start taking action. Finish the week strong. Finish strong. Focus on specifically what you want and take massive action. That's right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon. See ya. Oops.